I can clap. Okay. <laughs> hey, Justin from Storied here. And I'm a maker. I've worked in wood, clay, and fleece. And now I'm on a journey to meet other makers across campus and learn about their shops and the way that they work. Today, that journey has brought us to the College of Veterinary Medicine, where we'll find out how their team of farriers helps keep horses here and across central Illinois on their feet. So let's head inside and get to Making Illinois. So a farrier, uh, we trim and shoe horses. As a kid, uh, I had an amazing farrier. He built his own shoe and rig and uh, he'd show up and he had his dog in his truck with him and he'd show up and he'd light a fire in the back of his truck and it, he had a forge in the back of his truck and it was a coal forge. And man, as a little kid, I thought it was the coolest thing ever, right? Two, two, well, threefold, right? He got to have his dog with him at work. Uh -huh. He got to play with horses, <laughs> right? And he got to play with fire. <laughs> it's right? really the trifecta. Like, you're just like, man. And I was like, man, someday I want to learn how to do that. So life took me a little bit in a different, different manner. And I actually went to manage a dairy, work on a dairy and manage a dairy. But um, I owned horses and the dairy happened to own horses. Uh -huh. And so I got the opportunity back in 2000 to go to Lynn Benton Community College. The guy that used to be my farrier, uh, his brother-in-law was the one running the program. And then after that, I got an opportunity to work with my old farrier. Um, and today, I actually own his old rig. Well, speaking of the horses, um, Tori here is standing with who? Who do we have? This is Buddy. Hi, Buddy. Buddy's one of our teaching horses here. And talk me through what we're going to do with Buddy today. So I'm going to assess uh, like how he stands, what, he, what he's doing. My job as a farrier is really to, to look at the whole horse, to look at how their, their uh, nail is, right? Mm -hmm. Their hoof is what we call it, is their nail. I'm gonna trim his toenails mm -hmm. up and, and balance them a little bit. First of all, I'm gonna I just walk around him, look at, I'm gonna do this left front foot. Um, and so when I notice any, anything is, is if I look straight down him, is the inside of his foot kind of rolls under just a little bit right here. If I dissect it right down the middle, it rolls under right here and out here, it rolls out just a little bit. So, so he stands just a little bit like that. So first of all, I use a hoof pick and I'm gonna just clean out any excess dirt, rocks, assess the foot. Um, we have, um, our structures here, we have our frog, our sole right in here. We have our bars right here, which are an extension of the wall there. This is the wall out here. And then when I'm shaping up a shoe, um, there's, there's an inner wall right in here that's called the white line. And that's what I'm gonna shape that to. Got it. So that's sort of your, your point of reference yep. as you're working. Yep. Really, my job is to, to clean it up and to maintain their fingernail. I think as farriers, the best thing is, is I get paid to know what to leave, not to take too much off. And then we're going to use a rasp and just file. It's just a great big nail file. So we're just going to come here and make stuff nice and clean. and flat. So uniform wall thickness. You see this is where this was kind of kicked out right here mm -hmm. and gets kind of stretched right there. Stuff, dirt, little rocks can get stuck underneath there. <clears throat> and so we're just trying to gather that up a little bit. I also don't wear gloves a lot. Mm -hmm. I like my hands. I like my hands to tell me right. what I'm seeing. Sure. Right? When you're letting the the work inform what comes next. Yep. 
So we'll grab a couple different sizes and styles and and so we can take we can take measurements um, we can uh, use soft tapes hard like harder rulers um, the other way of doing this is taking different size a couple different size shoes and coming up to the to buddy here and flipping the shoe upside down uh-huh right? and seeing what and then you what fits and can see what fits it's no different than than us going to the shoe store, right? Right. We put something on our foot, right? So we'll look at that. I have to change the shape just a little bit, right? We'll look at that. Change the shape just a little bit. So I like this one just a little bit better than the other one. And what is it that you're looking at so, between these two? So length, um, if I straighten stuff out, how, how much am I making sure I'm covering these heels, mm -hmm. right? I want stuff to still be able, the dirt still to be able to clean out. I want to make sure I'm perimeter fitting this foot. I can come, come up in here. Um, and then the fun part about picking stuff up again is I can see like there's a little bit of flare there mm -hmm. I want to take off, right? So now I'm reassessing what I just the did. The work you've already done, right. right? but it gives me an opportunity to check it out again. So I think this shoe, even if I shape it all up, I'm gonna end up missing that toe mm -hmm. and I'm gonna miss this heel, right? So it's really close, but it's not quite where I want. There's right. not quite enough material. Uh -huh. So would it be okay for uh, us to squeeze into a friend's shoe and walk down to the mailbox? Right, maybe. you could, but it would hurt. But yeah, is it a little bit better to maybe put a little bit different shoe on so yeah. that we're not squeezing in? I think so. Right. So I don't like to shoe, I don't like to heat, uh, shape shoes cold. I like to heat them up. Okay, so what are we about to do to this? So thing? we're gonna put it in a, in a furnace called the forge. Okay. We're gonna heat this up and it does two things is, um, it, it heats it up so then on the anvil, I can, I can just uh, not hit it so hard. Okay, right? so we're softening the so metal I'm here. So softening the metal. Okay. So then I can just barely swing a hammer and I can shape it. Right. And I can shape it, hopefully, to come pretty darn close to fitting Buddy's foot. And Tobias, how hot is this forage? Uh, they get about 2,000 to, yeah, 2,200 degrees. That was very casual. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's only like 2,000 degrees. Right. And at this point, you're judging really by eye to see when that how how hot the shoe is. Mm -hmm. So I want I want uniform heat, right? Okay. So right now you can tell it's different colors. So if I hit it, it's gonna move differently. It's, each part of it will Each react. part's gonna re react differently because it's not the same heat. Right. Right. So if I have it a uniform heat, it's gonna when I hit it, it's gonna move the same amount. Sure. So I always like to try to go to a horse, horse's foot with a shoe a little bit wider. Um, hopefully this is just a little bit wider than his foot. And that gives it's you room. way easier room to close it sure. than it is to open it back up. Yeah. We'll see how good I was. So this is hot setting a horse. And when you hot set a horse, it burns the edge of the hoof wall. We're not trying to burn everything. And, and then also with our clips on our sides is the, the clips on the sides keep the shoe from twisting or shearing back, especially uh -huh. if a horse is jumping. Okay. Um, and so we're not looking for it to, uh, um, to burn, burn a lot, but mm -hmm. what I what I does is it takes the guesswork out of it for me. You can see exactly I how it's see fitting. Exactly how after it's you've fitting, taken the right? shoe away. So not only can I see it here is like we talk about my trim. I'm a little low right here, right? Okay. So I trimmed it lower than I did there and there. Got right? it. Right. So I can pick on my own work. Right. Right. So I can get that's better. instant feedback. Yeah. I don't have to guess. Right. Right. So then I can also turn the shoe over 
and it has a black mark on it and it shows me exactly what's touching and what's not right. touching. So what I want to do is, is lightly put another heat on this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move my clips in and match the edge of the wall. Right? Okay. Because the rest Looking for that of the perfect shoe, fit. Yeah, because the rest of the shoe is right where I want it. Great. So I'm not going to change really anything else. And then cool. my favorite part is this. <laughs> That's just water. Just water. Yeah. And cooling down the metal. Yeah. You hardening don't, it again. You re-hardening re it. Um, it's not tool steel. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not, not steel that we're using to make tools out of. Right. So, um, when we cool it off in water, it actually hardens it. Yeah. And it makes it to where it doesn't wear out as fast on our foot. Now I'm just gonna clean up the edges. Make sure there's all soft edges. This is where we come through and make sure we don't have any excess pressure. So I'm gonna clean up, these are called my seed of corns. From the veterinarian standpoint, this is where they end up opening a lot of abscesses, is in the bars and seed of corn. Not too much pressure. And then I always like to take another rasp and just slightly, no different than what I did to the shoe, I like to put just a soft edge on here. And that, that just keeps stuff from chipping out or breaking out. That we're just cutting the cutting in the ends of the nails off. Just ring ring them off. Actually, it just fits right in there. This is just a block, so block of metal. It's pretty uh -huh. simple. We stick it back here, hit the top of this, and it tightens it. So this we're just gonna bring the nails over just a little bit, and I'm gonna cut them off so that they're shorter. And this is a little gouge. It makes a little tiny hole right underneath the nail. Feel how it's still kind of sharp? Uh-huh. But see how these ones are really sharp. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to close these and basically make them clear. They're nice and soft, but they have a little crimp to the end of them. Uh -huh. And so now they'll help hold. And so now do you sort of watch how he's moving once yeah, that, that so, shoe is on? So typically, like before we even start doing him, like mm -hmm. I got to see him a little bit earlier today, but typically a veterinarian or farrier, um, when we first evaluate horses, we watch an owner or a trainer get them out of a stall. Mm -hmm. um, or if we're there without, we have vet techs and we have other uh, farrier apprentices and we we want to watch them walk before uh -huh. and after we're done right. right it's always a really good idea to watch both ends sure. right no matter what we've done with them so that we can make a true evaluation right if they were limping before we did them and we didn't notice it they're going to be limping when we're done with them. Right. right and there's potential then to send things in the wrong direction correct and so Good horsemanship, mm -hmm. right? Making making sure you're paying attention to all of the details. Sometimes we get really busy, right? And we stop really thinking about all of it. Right. We really need to make sure we slow down enough, even in our busy day, to pay attention to all of it, yeah. right? We'll save ourselves a lot of hassle mm -hmm. and horses a lot of hassle if number one, we have great, good, good horsemanship. Right. And good horsemanship starts with paying attention to them walking, right? From their stalls, from their paddocks, and away from you when you're done, uh -huh. right? As from the farrier standpoint and the veterinarian standpoint. I think that's so, a lot of where you, know, you cross from 
skill into art is taking the care to slow down yeah. and really sit with the work and the horse. And yeah. Well, Tobias, this has been super cool. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Justin. And we'll see you next time on Making Illinois. Yeah. Me too. It's late in the day. <laughs> <laughs>